love, where the love at? I'm back, baby, where the love? Where the love at? I'm back, baby, where the love? Boot it up, turned up, piped up. I'm back, baby, where the love? All right. Ooh. Do y'all believe in soulmates? So I think I talked about this before. I mean, maybe I talked about it. We so definitely I, talked about it before. I don't think on the podcast though. I'm gonna get your opinion on on I the believe, record. <laughs> I believe in soulmates. I don't think you have one soulmate. That's my opinion. I think you have multiple soulmates, like three to five. You just have to. It depends which one you meet first. Wow. How? What? Where'd you? Yeah. How? Huh? Yeah. Talk more about that. Well, I just think like. As humans, like there's no way there's like just one possible one only one person in the world. I feel like you have multiple people. There's like you can find mm. someone in the town that's worth that's meant for you, someone in the country, someone out of the country. Like so there's people that, that are meant for you. It's just who do you meet first? And that's the person that you meet. I guess, because if you think about it, like, you know, some people lose their significant others, unfortunately, to, you know, whatever, and then they find love again. And it's just like, well, you know, so, so you know, maybe passed away or, and, you know, you find yourself yeah. falling for somebody else. So that makes a lot of sense that, and I do believe because we're humans and we connect to people and it's not, it's not easy, but naturally you gravitate towards people and it's just like kind of whoever you meet first and it just kind of happens naturally. I definitely can see like that perspective. Yeah. Um, I always say, like you, can, I feel like you could, like you could love some, you could love a bunch of people, right? Of course, yeah. Only, I feel like, first, I feel like you only can fall in love with your soulmate. So, like you could mm -hmm. love, you could be with them forever, but maybe they weren't your soulmate. You just you know someone you loved and you cared about, and you probably knew this relationship would never like, go to where it was supposed to go, and you had to end up breaking up. But deep down, you knew like that was something that was eventually going to happen. I feel like you can fall in love with somebody. And that person is home. Like, like, I feel like there's someone for you, and they could, they could be in freaking California, but you in Pittsburgh, you never met mm -hmm. them. And that person found their other person in, in California. You might find your other person too. Or it's someone out in out of the country. So I just feel like with soulmates, like you can have multiple soulmates that are just awaiting for you to meet them. I have a plot twist though. So if you're married, right? And you're married to your soulmate, because if you're saying you can have multiple, what happens mm -hmm. in your marriage if you connect with somebody you feel as though is one of your soulmates? How do you handle that? Mm -hmm. That that is a good question. But I feel like once you lock in with one of your soulmates, it's hard, only something traumatic can separate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It has to be like a traumatic thing that happens that's separated, i.e., they pass away, or you guys end up like just cheating on each other and hate each other. You know. Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's over from there. And then you meet the other soulmates. So I feel like I feel like it has to be a traumatic thing or something to go wrong with your soulmate where you might have your other soulmate. I'm just thinking like, well, you know, what if you're at work and maybe, you know, it's just a rough patch in the marriage and it's just like you connect with somebody and you maybe your mind, you think, okay, that's my, like, how do you handle that? Do you just shift the focus of that energy onto your, your person and work through that and hold like that? I feel like something with soulmates, like you just when you know it, the person you know it. Like, and it's right. like for me, like for me, with me and Nubia, like once we started dating, I started hanging out with her. I was like, damn, like this, this is the one, you know, this she, she's the one, she's the person for me. So I felt like, like a rough patch, and then you meet somebody else. I don't think, like, I don't think you can meet your soulmate, another soulmate, like while you're with your current one. Okay. Like once you find your current one, like it's something that you're locking. Like you're gonna go through rough patches, obviously, because that's just something that's part of life. So I feel like once you, if you're really married to the person that is your soulmate, like that rough patch won't last that long. Mm -hmm. Someone else I like to, that perspective. Someone else to come in and take that. Maybe I might might be saying I might be naive. <laughs> if we were through, somebody would listen to us, like what the hell are you talking about? But I'm like I feel like yeah, there's multiple people out there in the world for you. And it just depends on who you meet first. I don't think there's mm. only because there's people like you said that have they were in love with somebody else, they're for somebody else. This person tragically passed away, and then you meet somebody else. Mm -hmm. And the soulmate thing has to be mutual because that's the only way it's going to be. Can't be. 
He was like, oh, I used to love someone, but that person probably didn't love you as much as you love them. And that was your soulmate. Your soulmates love each other the right way. You know when someone is your soulmate. Y'all think the same in certain, certain instances. Y'all act the same. Like, it's just, that's, that's your person. Hmm. Look at you being all philosophical and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I almost at one point, uh, I was gonna say this. Like at one point, I almost like went to school, like graduate school for a uh, for marriage counseling. And my mom was like, "What? You should have." My mom was like, "Boy, that make no money." I was like, "You right?" Yes, it does. If you open up your own PP, come on, yeah, man. You should have. Yeah, she said, "Open up your own practice." I was like, "You know," I was like, "I gotta do a lot of shit. Let me go get this." Out. Not really. There's a shortage of side note. We'll have to talk about this off camera. There's a shortage of black male therapists. You will be out here making money. I know. One time I thought about it because everybody was treating me like they damn therapist in college, but I was like, I might as well go do this shit. You should everybody, have. Like, it's never too late for life, Jenny. But you get with me. Side note, we we'll talk about that off camera. But mm-hmm. news. You got anything you want to input on there? Um, I. I, I learned something new about you. I feel like I've never, I feel like I've heard you talk about this, but I learned something new about you. And I think when I first met you, we talked about this. So I remember saying like, I think that you can fall in love with anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my way to understand like sexuality and identity. I think you can literally fall in love with anyone, but there are parts of people that like, for example, like there might be something about someone you dated before that you wouldn't deal with. But with this person you're connected to or your soulmate, someone you're ordained to by God, you would overlook it because there's more essentially positives or pros. But now that we're in this like marriage that's like so strong and like we've been through so much, I can't imagine loving anyone as much as I love you because I didn't even know I was capable of loving this much or like being this vulnerable or, you know, opening this part of myself. And there's parts of myself that have been unlocked because we're together. Things that I've had to like talk about so I don't know. I think I, I I think I believe in some form of soulmates. I hate when I was when we were growing up, I hated when people say, Oh, you're my soulmate, because people just use it so frivolously. To me, it was like, you know, just annoying. But I do believe that like God ordained us. Like we were supposed to meet, we were supposed to fall in love, we were supposed to go through like rough patches. Like everything we've been through was already supposed to happen. Like I think uh, that's what I believe. So I don't believe in multiple soulmates because I really don't believe that I could love someone as much as I love you. And I'm saying that meaning if you died, if I died, if you cheated, I don't think I could, I don't think I could fully do that again. I think I could fall in love again, but I don't think I could fully like link to someone the way I've linked to you. Like, I think you, you're, you're it for me. So not to say that, <laughs> you know, cause I don't want to like, shit on anyone who's been divorced or found love again because I do think you can marry the wrong person essentially you know you can fall in love you know there's traumatic love and there's a bunch of different kinds of love but I just find the way that you and I link there's no one else that I could do that with so that's kind of my take on it that was beautiful because I'm just thinking like you know I about said Jen I want to know more about you you've been like I'm real, getting there because I was real, like you've been real therapeutic <laughs> <laughs> no like just hearing y'all say that it's been very helpful for me because just thinking about my own personal marriage it's tough for me right now because when your spouse is all the way across the world and you had and I'm gonna be transparent because I, I think the realest thing about being on a podcast you have to be real about yourself and right now mm-hmm. just in my marriage it's so hard it's so hard to feel connected it's so hard to you have more rough patches than good patches and easily it's easy to fix the good when you're in the same space and when you're in separate spaces it's like okay now we're moving now we got to find a house but or a lack of connection so it's really really hard but to then to see like okay it's just a a moment in time it's a rough moment but you work Mm -hmm. through it and then being able to be vulnerable with my significant other about a lot of things that I suffer with over this past year and for him to say like I'm still here from you like for you and to be oceans apart just means so much so I was just sitting there listening to you talking about how even with the rough patches you still know that's the person for you and you know that's how it feels for me even when I'd be like fuck it fuck this like I'm done and I've had moments where this year and I'm like I'm not gonna lie to y'all I've had moments where I'm like should I have gotten married and then it's just like when you talk about it and when you're open and transparent for that person to be like I'm still here for you no matter what damn that's it so as you were talking it was just like look you making me like teary-eyed because I'm like okay, I'm not the only one who's 
experiencing, like when you go through a rough patch and then seeing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I did not expect to say this today, but it just came out. So, yeah. No, I love that. I love that you, A, feel comfortable being vulnerable because that's what we yeah. want from you. We want you to feel like you're in a safe space because you always are with us. Obviously, we're all best friends off camera. But I also want, mm -hmm. you know, I want to talk more about the rough patches because one of the things that help me get through rough patches because one of my biggest flaws that I will admit that I've been working on since I was little is my attitude. Like I have an attitude because I have really deep rooted trust issues. I feel like I've seen people trust people and really get fucked over essentially and become, you know, these broken versions of themselves. And you see how that impacts like the family and the unit and rough patches are something that I feel like they are just patches or temporary. Like that phrase, this too shall pass, that is so real. And I just want to, you know, talk to, you know, just address that with you because that's so real. Like when you're in those moments, they feel like this is it. Like, you know, we're coming to an end, like the world's shutting down. Like it's so overwhelming. But I always try to remember like this is a moment. Like it won't last forever. Nobody's perfect, you know, and accepting like my fault and shit. Like accepting like, you know, I might have said something wrong or I might have misconstrued a situation um so yeah you're a thousand percent not alone I say that all to say that you're not alone that's a real feeling whether you're in a marriage or in a relationship and um you know it is temporary and I think we both connect on that same level of you know having deep-rooted trust issues because you know as we work yeah. the hills if something don't go like you know our way or if things aren't seeming right or something seems off you know you know we've talked about this off camera of how it's like yo I'm done and, it, and it's just like you got to learn about yourself like you just can't give up when something's not going your way you can't give up when things seem off like how do you exactly. work through it as long as it's not detrimental to you you know you in general but it's you know rough patches are hard but it's like the beauty in it is seeing you get through it and it's just like yo okay all right I got this but and when you in it it's what you say like I said build something like when you guys when you go through a rough yeah patch, it makes a the link stronger you know what I'm saying the glue gets harder to separate because it feels like it's separating during the rough patch but once you experience and go through it and then there you got to ask yourself is it worth getting through and if you feel mm -hmm. like you know, then everything's always going to be worth getting through you know what i'm saying some things may not be I mean, you might have, everyone has uh, you know what i'm saying cut off periods but did they reach that cut off period so mm -hmm. and i think that's one thing about like relationships and marriages like and people who say like they don't like marriage and agreements because I feel like a lot of people just aren't willing to uh, work with people and honestly working on their selves as well. And I think Nubia said the biggest thing is accepting your fault in a situation. Mm -hmm. If you can't accept your fault in a situation, then all you do is call people selfish. And in the day, you don't accept it. Mm -hmm. You don't accept fault in everything. So accepting fault is something that's big and something that we don't like to do as humans because we don't like to accept blame but you have to because in every situation there's not only just one person it takes two to tango so you sure in the situation as well they may have played a bigger part but maybe you you um accepting your blame in the situation might help come to a resolution where they realize all right you know, you did this thing but i took it way out of pocket i took it out of standard and i needed to come back and realize so accepting fault is i i think something that's huge yeah. mm -hmm. And y'all Libras, y'all are calm. I give y'all that. Y'all are very calm human beings. Oh, my, it takes a lot to get y'all mad, but. So, but what is, what is it called? And all that, I don't believe in all that science things, but I don't believe in it, man. That's, that's just me, but it might have some truth to it. I believe in it a little bit. It, I think it does. Just yeah, bit. I don't think it has to be like scripture, but I think there's like some <laughs> truth to it. But I, you know, anybody could be anything. Everybody won't fall into a category. True, you're right. I feel like everybody would be like, oh, that's me. Like, go read the next <laughs> Well, everybody wants to be part of the community. It makes you relatable. You know what I mean? Like, think about how much, think about things that make you relatable. Like, you have all your friends right now because y'all are on the football team. You know what I mean? Like, that's a way for people to connect. 
So I think that the same way you use football is the same way someone else uses Zodiac. Like it, it helps define mm-hmm. your experience. Oh, good connection. Yeah. Because you and your friends, y'all been friends for forever. Y'all still as close as y'all They're going on almost 10 years now. Wow. Y'all need a little reunion. I'm coming. His, his college friends, his high school friends. Because I got kicked out and I'm coming back. Sorry. Go ahead, <laughs> said I, got I need to cut you off. It's another story for another day, but. Let me get out. Out. But anyway, um no, no, y'all kick me out. Never mind, never mind. We ain't gonna do that on camera anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, what's next, man? We've been getting some, some deep talks, man. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, because you know, I want I want your opinions about these things. I want when I was looking at look when I was thinking about attraction, I had so many thoughts running through my mind about you know why you and I connected and what kept us connected. Because one thing about relationships. People always say, I, you know, you know, some, you know, physically people become unattractive, but I've never felt that towards you. Like you've never been unattractive to me. Like I've always wanted that ass. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I just like, you know, I am average in no sense of a way. You know, anyway. don't don't do don't do the ass thing. Don't do. That. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just like. <laughs> I know, right? I really feel bad for dog. <laughs> oh, you talking about the dude I talked about earlier? Yeah, I feel bad for dog. Man. That does make me sad. <laughs> like, I can see she was small, but she said average. But that was just an average dick. Um. Oh wait, what was our? What was? Our... I, I knew we was talking. About... Oh, oh, go ahead, noobs. About being attractive, you never lose an attraction to your person. Oh uh, yeah. So I just wanted to get your your opinion because I think that. When you think about attraction, I think it's always like a hollow version. Like you don't think about the deeper connection that you have to have to sustain a relationship. Because one thing about looks is that first of all, they will not always fade. I hate people say like a looks will fade. They really won't. Because my Nana's still a bad bitch and she's about 70. And my mom is gorgeous and she's about 50. <laughs> so I have not seen black women crack. So that mm-hmm. it don't fade. It might get older, but it don't fade. So but yeah, attraction just goes deeper than physicality. And I feel like in today's world, we don't talk about, you know, the deeper meetings and connections that sustain relationships. It feels very hollow, you know, making TikToks and stuff. And that's all fun and, and dandy, but you need the stuff that's off camera too. And I wanted our viewers to understand our perspectives and kind of what keeps us connected to our spouses so that, you know, they can have something to relate to and maybe give us some advice on what works for them. So I want to open up that space for that kind of conversation. I saw an interesting post the other day about marriage contracts. So I want you guys' opinion about this. So, you know, when we got married, we were like, you know, we're going to get married and we're going to marry for life. And this is it until we die or divorce, right? So there was a post that said, what if you had to renew your marriage every five years? Like you would renew like a lease on a car or, you know, anything else. So, or like a lease on your, you know, your on your home or your apartment. So how do y'all feel about that? Like, how do you feel about checking in every five years to be like, do we still want to do this? Or you just like, you break out? Like, what's what's your thought about that? I got to pay that fee still? Yeah, you got to pay the fee. You got you to do it all over again that's every five years. That's the government being greedy now. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? No, we for still, real. We still going to be together. We still going to wear the wings, but. We won't have to file uh, separate on but we're gonna tell everybody we marry still because I'm not gonna keep paying that every five years. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so to answer the first question, I think you went back to about attraction and I'll get into the contracts. Um what I found to be so attractive in my partner, outside of just like you know, the physical part, but yeah, that got me. But um one day I was having a really bad, I suffer from anxiety, I'm not afraid to tell the world, everybody know. I was having a really bad panic attack. And I'm gonna tell you, I was stupid. It was over because I couldn't fry, find the little nozzle to our deep fry, but it just sent me. And he said, Jada, it's okay. Calm down, get your coat. We just wanna go buy another one. And that was the most attractive thing in the world. It wasn't the fact that it was we were getting another air fryer. I mean, deep fryer. It was the fact that he just told me it's okay. Like he helped me get through that panic attack. Whereas, you know, maybe somebody else in my past would be like, get over it, it's fine. Like, like that was one of the most attractive things that he has ever done. And I was just like, wow, like this person really loves me that they see I'm really struggling. Even though it was over, it was probably more than just a stupid ass corp. That's, that was kind of what set it off for me. And for him mm-hmm. to just be like, it's all right, like calm me down. And we already knew one and it was fine. 
but just the fact that he was able to do that, I found it to be one of the most attractive things in the world. Did you end up finding the court? Yeah, I found the court. Like a couple of weeks later, I was pissed. So I got a deep fried on my mom. So I had two. Yeah. I was so mad. you know what that was? You know what he did? A couple of things. Yeah. Okay. He acknowledged your feelings and he validated mm-hmm. your experience. Think about how important that is. Ooh. Like, have you ever gotten to an argument with like your spouse or even like a friend or like your mom and you didn't necessarily want them to agree with you. You just wanted them to acknowledge that you have an opinion on this. Like it didn't even have to be like, okay, Nubia is right or Nubia is wrong or whatever. It was just like, Nubia has a feeling about this. I'm going to acknowledge it and we can move forward. Cause that's what I heard you say. Like he acknowledged my feelings. He validated my experience. He didn't make me feel like I was crazy or, mm-hmm. you know, he made me feel safe. Like just that mm-hmm. piece. That's so important for for relationships yes, and emotional general. safety. Yeah. And so I didn't I even see it that I way. That. Thank you for pointing it out. Thank you for pointing yeah, it out. Listen, when you guys talk, I'm I'm ready. I'm here to listen. I want you to I want to make sense of you know what you're saying. And I think that that's just so important that you acknowledge that because you're like, it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't that he went to go buy another one. It was that he just took a second to be like. Mm-hmm. that's okay we'll fix it like you know just yep. acknowledging your feelings and not making you feel like you're not allowed to feel this way mm-hmm. you know creating that safe space so and it was wild I, I broke down crying after that and like he gave me like a big house like that and I think it was I think it was more going on like I think I was so busy and that week and I was icing on the cake and just for it to it was something else was so small I could be fixed but I'm like you actually saw what I was going through you're able to help me because I yes. was just like everywhere um and yeah that was that was one of the most it's attractive true. things what you say? So that 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 that's important. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we're going to oh the contracts. So we're going to the contracts. I, every five years, like I'm kind of with Wayne. Like let's wear these damn rings because Uncle Sam ain't get no more of my money. Yeah. However, <laughs> there there is a flip side. I also kind of do like it because it's kind of like an accountability thing. It's like a check in. How we doing in this marriage? We still rocking. We still gonna keep going another ten, another next five years. So it it almost I feel like. If you're married in a relationship, you should always check in with your significant other just to see how things are. You, you know, are you happy? Are you not happy? What's going on with you? How can we make this better? So I think you should do an unofficial check-in without the money. Because the yeah. money, I don't kiss my ass. But I think it's good to have a check-in. You should. Yeah, not even every like five years, that's too long. I feel like every couple of months it's checking. Yeah. In. You can check the temperature, how we doing, how we we gotta do that. Because a lot of things mm-hmm. going on that you might not know about, especially if like you guys are working. Have a kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a whole different thing. So just for always checking with each other, make time for each other. But every five year, I got to pay you whatever money we paid. Nah, bro, you good? I found mm-hmm. something. That's gonna be better to run together. <laughs> no, I like you so cheap. Bro, there's no way I would keep. They paying ain't you. get my money. I'm with you though. You know, every five years, the money it's gonna go up. I guess it's going mm-hmm. to I know our government is shady. They definitely will charge some extra shit. There's going to always be fees. I, I guess it's going to work out. Like, if y'all, if y'all fighting, y'all are good, and y'all want to go through the divorce process, and, you know, y'all got a year left, then you can, you know what I'm saying, let's just rock this year out, you know what I'm saying, and then after this year. Yeah, that was another good point, too. Like, divorces are so expensive. <laughs> Go your separate. Better to stay with the separate. I might do it, because, you know, that way you don't have to get the half. Like, oh, we good, we gone. Yeah. Yeah, true. Like, like he's trying to get the divorce done so they can get the half. And you're like, no, we still mad. We still mad. Read. And then that, <laughs> you out of here. You know what I'm saying? So things like that. I can see. I can see. Okay. Yeah, definitely. for sure. I thought that was an interesting post. I was like, let me, let me talk. Let me talk to them and see what they think about this. I like that one. Yeah. Um. So for like ours, we're going, we need to come up with a, a ending, like a spicy section. I'm gonna, we're going to come up with a fun name for it. I'm going to ask you like a spicy question. But um, to wrap us up on like a spicy note, <laughs> would you be open to granting your significant other a hall pass? Why, why not? Restriction. I think you find hall pass for me. So go- hall pass yeah, is um, basically you're allowed to be single for a day. I'll, I'll say 24 hour hall pass because like ain't nobody trying to be single for the whole weekend but we're going to talk about 24 hours you know don't got to check in with you I can smash you I want talk to I want 
Y'all I'm can't single. Ask me that question. Y'all can't ask me that question right now because I I ain't gonna have dick for twelve months, so I can't I can't answer that right now. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll answer. I'll answer. <laughs> I will not. not <sighs> Would I accept one? Uh, <laughs> you got that MS license. You know what I'm saying? If she's going to grant me one, I got no problem, but I'm just not going to return the favor. So you just got to think about it in that situation. Uh, you know, mm. I, I can't think so about it. You would take one, but you wouldn't give one out. Then I'll give her mine. Don't play with me. She'll get a hard yeah, pass. You're in that relationship. <laughs> Wait, so. <laughs> Wait, so the, wait, talk more about that because I want to know. What would you say? I said, I, if, if it was if it was offered to me, I would think about it for a second. I probably would accept it, even though I love you and care about you and I don't need anybody else. Got to preface that. Um, and I probably wouldn't wonder about it. I would just go see what, what, would it be, what it would be like in the single world, just like as an experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like an experiment. And see, like, ah, see, I definitely don't want this. But I wouldn't, I would not grant it to you. I feel like as a guy, so say say as a guy, right? I feel like it's easier for a woman to go get some dick real quick than this for a guy to go get some pussy real quick. So if I guy would have to work a little harder, what you mean? No, it's not. It's definitely easy. You guys have the problem. You can just go swipe left on Tinder real quick. <laughs> what you trying to do? I'm single for the night. You know what I'm saying? You can do something like that as a guy. I, I mean, it might you might hit one up and it might work. And she mm. work for the night, but you know you could just do a one swipe thing. It's some trial and error for a guy. You gotta go through trial and error. So you Unless you just be a sneaky one, fucking know you gotta get a hall pass and set it up. For like months, I'm like, all right, every year I get a hall pass on January 24th. So I got fast. Oh, you was real close to my birthday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like that. I'm saying. After some tough decision, I probably, you know what I'm saying, just see as experiment, as experiment. But as for me, I would never grant the hall pass. No, not fair. It's not. not fair. So tell me, so what if you, what if you grant Darius a hall pass, and then he's like, "Can I have one?" And he said, "No." What you gonna say? See, no, that's not fair because if you get a hall pass, I get a hall pass, and then we're just out here roaming the halls. You see you in twenty four hours. And just <laughs> no way. No way. Nah, we're not. I'm the hall monitor. Where your, where your, where your note. You got no no. It just depends. If you write me a dissertation on why you feel the need to have a hall pass and you got enough research and it's credible, I'll think about it. Can't be out. You know what I'm saying? You can't be out of grant hall passes. They might find that up this on me. So wait, where did <laughs> where did this hall pass concept come from? Because I've never heard of it before. Oh, you never so it's actually a, it's actually a movie. It's like one of those like white boy comedy movies. It's called oh, Hall okay. Pass. It came out a while ago, but it was actually funny because we like, wait, say it again. It happens in real life, like Dirk Nowinski, uh, I believe his wife, she, who is a black woman, and he's German, but he has range to one night out of the year to fuck anybody he wants to. I don't know if she had the same opportunity, um, but yeah, he was like yeah. a like basketball player and he come out of Europe. And I don't know if she had the same opportunity, but yeah. What do you think, Nick? Um... So if I'm being completely honest, like a thousand percent, I A wouldn't want one because I don't like diseases and things. So like, I don't want to go fuck nobody else. But two, I feel like I know myself, like I'm real, I don't know the word. I don't know if I'm curious or petty or what, but I would give him one just to see what he would do with it. Mm. And then I would use that shit against him later. And I think he know that. And that's why he was like, yeah, I want to be a thousand. If I'm being honest, I'd be like, oh, trip. okay. So you've been talking to the bed and now you want it. Oh, okay. You, I would use it as a test because I'm. <laughs> Look I at him. As, as a test. This is not 12th grade trigonometry. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, who the fuck is doing trigonometry in fourth grade? It's like 11th grade. <laughs> oh. <sighs> that's a good question. I really, mm, I don't know. No, I, I know it's, it's a hard and... question because right now in today's society this is a very real concept like people are kind of create their own kind of relationships in their own terms it's like polyamory like what I it, it before, is like just polyamory. like temporarily <laughs> i mean if i could like ask me this when he come back home because it's hard being a long distance relationship it's okay. not hard it's doable but it's like because i'm like oh, are you taking past he's home what'd you say you can't pretend he's home 
All right, let's pretend he's some hell no hand get no goddamn hall pass. You can't no, pretend no, no, no. I ain't get one hand get one. Hell no. What if he get what if he offered it and offered you one and would you decline and say no you can't get one either? But he said if, you, if he offered me one, are there rules? Okay, let's do hall passes. So yeah, you can, you can, yeah, you can create your own rules. Which own? Um, but came but, but yeah. the rule, the rule is that you yeah. get a hall. No, pass. come on, Whoa, yeah. If he said, "Babe, I'm gonna give you this hall pass," and you I'm gonna take a set of rules, and we come up with a set of rules, probably. You know, I'm always into that spicy life. I probably would. If it's just like. It depends because I'm with noobs. Like, I don't want nothing. I don't want no STDs. I don't want, but if we come up with a set of rules. You're going to be smart with it. You know what I'm saying? I was going to say, Lord, to start raw dogging anybody you see. Mm -hmm. No. Then then I probably would. And then, no, I'm not crazy ass. I would probably want to use it again. Oh, remember, I didn't fuck you, but you fucked her. So, yeah. Yeah, right. Do you like get to like claim it later? (laughs) Well, you can't really claim it because you'll say you gave me a all pass. I would try it out. If there's rules and regulations in place and it was safe, mm-hmm. pass me up. If you didn't cho- if you didn't chose to seize the opportunity that you had at hand, can't get mad at him. Okay. If that's in a rule book, I'll do it. But ah, I think that is the end of episode 12. That's episode 12. I thought it was 11. It would oh it 12. Was, yeah. Never mind. Hi, it's 12. Y'all just playing. <laughs> and the episode 12, man. Thank you for all that came through and listen. Data kind of spoiled it, so you'll figure out why she was confused a little bit. But I'm always confused. Us, follow us on Instagram at where to love at media. Uh follow us on YouTube at where to love at and support us. And we appreciate everyone that has been listening for the past. You know, eleven episodes, and you know, we just love y'all, and, and we appreciate y'all. I think we, we this was probably one of my favorite episodes. So the past twelve episodes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. We passed eleven. So this is twelve. But... <laughs> next time on. I'm back, baby. Where the love? Where the love at? I'm back, baby. Where the love? Where the love at? I'm back, baby. Where the love? Put it up. Oh.